And together, we give you the deep inside right here on Jova TV, sponsored by the Big Six Barbershop. Team Jova, y'all. Thank you very much for coming. This is the deep inside right here at Big Six Barber Shops. This is what we do every Friday, every Friday. To our proud sponsors, Big Six Barber Shop. If you want a place to do your hair braiding, come to Big Six Barber Shop. Make sure you make an appointment. And also, Big Six is also having this, you know, luxury hall that you can use to do all of your occasions, events. Just contact Afro, Afro what? Afrobeat Luxury Hall. Afrobeat Luxury Hall. Contact Big Sis. That is the number below the screen. You can call Tyro. Just let Tyro know that you have a promo code Deep Inside or Joba. Today we have a guest in the show. We are going to speak to uh, you know our friend, our brother from another mother, and also our sister, and also Slay by Bina. If you need a makeup artist, listen, contact Slay by Bina. That is the number below the screen. Uh, that is the name is below the screen. I'm just excited over here because I'm having KK Ruby cuisine because when the chain will be up bad. As I, when I saw the food, I'm just you know so excited. Uh, if you want KK Ruby cuisine to also help you with your cooking and everything, just contact them. They're going to help you. Remember when you call, you have a promo code Joba. Let's go for a commercial break. When we come back, we we'll talk about it. Thank you very much. This is the deep inside of Boba Village and Apartment. Thank you. If you go to Ghana and you want a place to stay, just contact my mom of Boba Village and Apartment. It's a beautiful place that you can stay. If you want some people to do your delivery and everything for you, it's all about Joba Delivery. Joba Delivery. We are in the era of tax season. Tax season. Contact online tax and accounting services. Online tax and accounting services. Paul, shall I have you? Oh, good you look sharp. Oh, I'll be sharp guy. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be sharp guy. A quick, a quick introduction about you. If anybody is watching, they want to know about who is Paul. Who is Paul? Uh, I'll say I'm a fashion designer. Okay. Uh, uh, basically, a person in the creative space. Yeah. Fashion designer and also a person in the creative space. Yeah. Okay, so if anybody wants to contact uh, Paul, do you have any social media handles they can? Yeah, the name is Kente Laws on uh, IG. Kente Laws. Laws on IG. Yeah. All social media platforms. Yeah. So sharp, sharp. I'll come to your TV. Let what do you see this beautiful lady beside me that is slain by Bina. She's Hello. slain and that. How you doing? I'm good. You're looking so beautiful. Thank you. I love a bit of a slay by Bina. Um, Slay by Pina has in, has been in business for uh, next August will be five years since I started. Um, this year I became a licensed esthetician in New York State. Um, 
I provide all types of makeup services for photo shoots, um, video shoots, um, weddings, sweet sixteens, everything. Anything you need, I got you. Sweet sixteen, anything you need, you got them. Yep. All right. So you've been in business for five good years. Yep. Let me ask you about you being in business over here. What have been your challenges and everything over here? Um, I will say some challenges is people getting people to kind of respect my business because I'm young. Some people are like, oh, she's young. She needs to give me discounts. They don't think they need to. There's value in my business, but there's value in my business. This year, I invested a great lot into going to beauty school to become an esthetician. It wasn't an easy journey, um, but I made it, and now I'm licensed. So, yeah. You made it in what? I'm now licensed in New York State. So professionally, it's nice. Oh, come on, man. Let's yeah, give it to you. Let's give it to you. Let's give it to you. It's not easy. It's not, it's not easy. <laughs> Yacht TV. Yes, sir. And the CEO of Yacht TV. Charlie, you did a great job. I mean, you saw the Yacht 360. Look at that beautiful girl on the screen. Yes, yes. Like I told you last week, um, the Yacht TV will come and hard. Um, the Yacht 360, I will even say, that's a test transmission. Let me call it the test transmission because we're trying to see our strength, our production strength, and know what we can do or what we can do to better our production. So yeah, yeah, see, we have a lot to come. Like I think the 2024 is great here. People should just watch out. We should just watch out. Yeah. I like that people should just watch out. That is Yati with the C of Yati. I mean, he's doing a great job. Yeah, I, I know you're bringing uh, something. What, what is this? Yad, Yad, what? Sa yeah. Yeah, no, the last Ghana music guy, what you brought a yard. Yeah, we have a yard, yeah, uh, yeah, cipher. Cipher, okay. So let me give Kali explain the cipher. The cipher is the, between us and Ghana Music Award USA. So it's Yard TV, Ghana Music Award USA, cipher. It's a cipher that we are trying to promote the young and up and artists who want the opportunity to showcase their talent that is home and abroad. So um, last year, that was our first edition. Shout out to Don D. I spoke to Don D that you have to do want to do a production for Ghana. Shout out to Don D, the, the C of Ghana in, uh, Music Award yes. USC. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to yes. you, Don D. The CEO. Yes. <laughs> yeah, when, I, when, I, when I spoke to him, right. um, he didn't even uh, state, even in the second, he was like, you hey, I support this. So last year I went to Ghana, shot the video for seven artists, came back to America, shot the video for six artists, we put up on the side. And this year we're coming strong. This year we want to take it to another level. This year we might surprise the cypher with a big top artist from Ghana and the top artist based in America. We are working on it currently right now. And based on that, we have some surprises that might come. We're going to do Fest this summer. So let's just watch out for that. Big up, big up. So you are first. Yeah. So you were talking about you went to Ghana last year yeah. to shout out seven people. Yeah, on the cypher, we have to do seven artists on one beat. And yeah, and you know, the, the artists, some are coming from here, um, from the village, it's not all that. So we need to put them on the TV, in the studio, record them, put them in the hotel, shoot the video. It's a whole production team. And everything was funded by, by Yachty. Wow. Wow. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. That's a great job. Yachty, it's a that's what's up. 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 Slave by Bina, let me come to you. Let me ask you this question before we move on to our training. Uh, I know you do makeups and everything, right? Uh, especially, you said like. I do skincare, facial. Oh, you do skincare? Mm -hmm. That's what a session is. A session is a, a skin therapist. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so let me let me come to you. If anybody wants to contact you, what are the social media handles? Um, the social media handles for Instagram and TikTok is Slayed by Pina. Uh, it's Slayed by Pina as S L A Y E D B Y B E N A. Mm, mm, okay. And you say you do more about Ghanaian people or just everybody? Um, I do everyone. Everyone is welcome. So, uh -huh. so like, like in the YouTube space, like <clears throat> when you go and you check, sometimes you can check and say that, okay, fine. Mm. Most of my viewers are coming from Ghana or coming from this. What are be mm. your people who have been, you know, contracting you? Um, right now for like the past few years has mainly been, um, Ghanaians, but this year, but this year was kind of like a little bit like mixed. I got, um, I had some Hispanic customers, some Asian customers too. So, so it's been a little bit mixed this year. Okay. So my last one, when you have a wedding, you have all these bride, bride, maids and other people, mm -hmm. right? What is this biggest challenge? Because I know wedding, you're going to do the main, 
uh, bride and also the bride maids. Sometimes you have 16, 11, yeah. 8, what have you. So the challenge is about these people. Are you the only person doing the makeup or you have an assistant? Um, For right now, since I started, I've been like the only person. But I don't, or like usually they'll have someone else. But um, I think the biggest challenge is sometimes timing. Because, like, you know, people, especially when it's, like, whoever, like, the celebrant, like, for the instance, the bride or maybe, like, the birthday person, people will be calling them, asking them all. Honestly, some of the questions that they get asked is nonsense. Mm. You don't need, it's the person's day. You're ruining their day by asking them certain questions. Like, I feel like there's certain questions that people who are supporting the person, you can figure it out yourself. But then it takes away from my time. Like being able, because then now the client is pissed off. They're not enjoying their day. It takes away from the process. But then me as a service provider, my job is to keep calm so that my client is calm. Okay. I try to cheer up my clients. So I'm always there for my client's best interest. Like I recently had a client in September for her 50th birthday. She had a lot of people calling her mm. from the whole accent. Honestly, some of the questions was crazy. So they ruined her mood. She became sad. But my job literally was, okay, Auntie, like, please don't try to, um, don't be too angry because it ruins your makeup. Also, right. While I'm trying to do it, so we just try to like uplift her spirit. Once we got there, you know, did like body glow and everything, make sure she's good. She did her entrance; it was beautiful. Mm. So that's that's what you have to do. Like, make sure they're happy and like forget like when I'm like working on a client, I forget about like the other people because they don't matter to me. My clients who matters to right. me. Right. Because sometimes these bridesmaids and stuff. They think the day is about them. It's mm. not about you. It's right. about the bride. Right. And if it's about your friend, don't take the shine from your friend. Although you're a part, it's not about you. Please be on the side. <laughs> be on the side. I like that. I mean, uh, congrats to you. You're doing a great job in the society, you know. Uh, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Paul, oh, let me come to you. about the Kintista? Oh, yeah, back to you, about the Kintista. I know, you know, the see you about the Kintista. I love, you know, I love African print. That is something that I always promote. Tell us a little bit about your, 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 your fashion thing. Okay, like uh, I used to uh, back in Ghana, I used to work with Sapa here and uh, RTVs and most of the artists in uh, Tema because I, I used to design t shirts for them for like promo purposes and all that stuff. And then, uh, yeah, coming back, coming over here, uh, I set up selling brands to like get running as well. So that's what I'm working on currently to, to get them. Okay, so you working in Ghana, working with all these kind of celebrities, I mean, it was very flexible, you know, enjoying everything. Over here in America, what would be some of the challenges? I know sometimes uh, when I move from Ghana over here, it will, my challenges about me doing videos with my African people was about some of them wasn't understanding the job. So you having to interact with all these people over here, what would be some of the challenges? Oh, Aside of uh, working with them, you know, like, uh, it's, it's a busy place to be in and uh, you have other things to work against you as well. You know, Ghana is much more calm and relaxed and you get to do things at your own pace. But over here, it's like everybody's busy, so mm. you have to get on the same schedule, same time and everything to, to be able to work with people. That's I think the biggest challenge. The biggest challenge. All right, you guys are doing a great job. Let's talk about uh, some some training videos I was training in the in the space of the internet. I know Paul is a dread guy. Paul <laughs> 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 is a dread guy. So when I talk about a dread guy, this is a dread. You know about this this guy who went to school in Achimota and Achimota people was finding it so difficult to admit him in school. And later on, I think they took everything to, uh, to the court. But you know. God being so good, they won the case, and he started you know going to school in Achimota. I think uh, he's in the second year. I think first year he went to the uh, National Science and Quiz to help them. At, uh, was it the second year, right? Yeah, in the second year. In the second year, yeah. Part he was part of the National Science and Quiz people, yes, and he, he also took the space of you know writing the WASI exams. And guess what? Everything was A's. Oh, I'm gonna to come to you because I know that yeah. Straight up, my Straight up to you first because I know that yeah, this is this is this is a film. Yeah. Having a dread, the challenges, yeah. you go know, the feeling about that. What what are you talking about this? Oh, I think uh, we Africans like sometimes you emphasize on things that are not necessary, right? Mm -hmm. When you come into the space uh, over here in the states, it's more like, it's more about what what you can do, you know. 
is basically basically about can you do the job or can you fill in the space or do you have the qualities to be able to manage whatever you will put in charge of and we we as Africans like basically we tend to look past what the person's ability is but how what what they look on the outside you know that's why most of us are not like really genuine people because we hide behind the looks right and uh, we do otherwise but with this kid i think uh the school was looking out uh, uh, more on the his outlooks like how he looks his hair and stuff instead of thinking about is he qualified to be in a school is he ready as a student that was the most important thing in the first place. okay pa what about you um for me um, 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 i don't know what to say about this issue because when it started i knew how i had issues with a lot of people you know because uh, um, I love the dread. Unfortunately, I can't carry dread. But I love the dread. No, I can't carry dread. <laughs> but I love people who carry dread. Uh-huh. You know? And um, I don't see your physical appearance as nothing to do with your character or your intelligence. But unfortunately, that's how our, where we come from. We see things. That's why we see yeah. corrupt leaders with bald headed. Always right. <laughs> yeah. Because if when we see them so gentle, they come to us and we see them, oh, people even vote based on looks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, true. People see somebody like, oh, he's a nice person, I'll just go to mm-hmm. even people yeah. who choose partners. They see somebody, oh my god, you understand? Right. It's mm-hmm. an affectionate. This is the time that we need to know people for who they are and the yeah. capabilities that they have. They the have what? Instead of what they mm-hmm. what they how they present themselves. Because guess what? It's fashion. You understand? That's everything true. you see in our body, on our body, everything is fashion. Tattoo, everything, what we wear, everything is fashion. So when we consider it and take it from that level, we are going to understand. Because when I came to America, I see lawyers with dreadlocks, I see doctors with dreadlocks, I see. I never saw that in Ghana. Never in my entire life saw somebody who's American doctor with dreadlocks, except Milan, uh, Milan, the deposition. He was a, a doctor. Uh, who is also, but I guess why he's from a rich family, so probably he can mm-hmm. buy his way. But when you're from a poor background, there's no way you can have the opportunity to go to school with their dreadlocks. It doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. I think we need to go beyond their uh, archaic, uh, archaic mindset. Mm-hmm. But Achimata as a school also might have their rules and regulations, which I respect them for that. But guess what? Achimata is trying to compete with the world school. Achimata is a school that sometimes if you do, uh, they all, sometimes they do, um, Exchange programs, right? Whereas foreign students come to the, school, come to the school, they also think they are students going to the foreign uh, schools. Mm-hmm. So, guess what? If your students are doing foreign exchange, exchange programs, and stuff, they are seeing all these things there, right? Uh, one of the biggest, one of our biggest youthful star, which is a brown matter, is now carrying very well school in the university in, mm-hmm. in, in America. Here is the same thing. So, they, I think we need to go beyond our primitive mindset and see that very lot is now. Shout out to uh, the guy, uh, my guy. For giving us a uh, great, I learned he was a form two when he wrote it. Yeah. I wish I could write my exam when I was a form two and pass like that. Me, yeah, I don't have that mind. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that mind. Like yeah. Slave I've been now. What about you? <laughs> um, I think for me, um, I agree with um, Pa Freddy because um, appearance shouldn't be like shouldn't determine what kind of person you are. Because honestly, like in this day and age, like too many people are judged for their appearance, like. Sometimes people, like, I meet people, like, I, I feel like it happens to all of us, like, the best of us, where, like, you meet someone, you see their appearance, like, you might be like, oh, like, you judge someone because of their appearance, but once you get to, like, speak to them, you see, oh, like, this person is like this, or whatever, like, we judge the book by its cover, like, a lot, but when it comes to, like, hair and school, I, I think it shouldn't be a factor, because the person is coming there to learn, and the school is also, a, it's a private school, right, They're co- the parents, oh, it's a government school. Well, regardless, like, there's funding going to the school so that the, that person can be there. So I feel like that person is, is obviously a benefit to the school because he won prizes and stuff for the school. So you shouldn't think, oh, his hair, because of his hair, this, no. It's who the person is and what they can bring to the table, not their appearance. Their appearance shouldn't matter. Like, clearly, he, he's very successful and he's going to go to higher places from how far he's come, so... It shouldn't really matter. It shouldn't really matter. Let me go to this one. Does anybody marry Captain Africa? 
expect you if anybody going through challenges about anything about your marriage about your divorce does it have to affect the society the reason why i'm asking this is that this nigerian <clears throat> actor america he has been trying i think he was having some issues way back i don't know how many years ago. i think he got divorced already so the trending side about this america had this interview and every interview that america goes america makes sure he doesn't talk about what his marriage because you know he didn't come out to talk about whatever the wife did to you know him whatever would transpire everything about the marriage but this interview i mean the interview was so good to pull america to talk a little bit about whatever happened to him is in what his marriage because mm -hmm. america make it clear that he was owing some properties uh, that was some school i think international school that was uh uh, was senior high school yeah. yes that's senior high school but he traveled to overseas and later on he heard that some people came to drag everybody from the school that all the students have to leave the school so he couldn't do nothing when he came back the wife that he was married to took all the you know the documents papers about properties everything and he didn't even know where everything went he he can even see some of his land being sold to other people but what can you do you don't have any you know any evidence that you own this line or so there's a gentleman who's going to get married next year i think he's called bright so he saw this emeka interview and he was saying that because of what emeka is saying he doesn't think he's going to get married <laughs> he's going to propose his marriage he's going to postpone it so i don't know let me talk about you uh, sleep by bina you um, mm -hmm. i had seen the tweet um of bright right but i think it, it's given uh, monkey see, monkey do. In a way, uh, he, I you know, know he had monkey see, monkey do. Cause okay. like there's some people where they can't think for themselves, and I've come across those um kind of people like in life, like during like whatever from like sometimes like client friends and whatnot. But um, I think in life you should be able to think for yourself. Yes, you can learn from somebody else's experience, but don't say oh because like he I know in the tweet he has said like mm. oh he watched the interview four times. So like now he's um, completely sure. Like yes, maybe your situation might relate in some way, but if that's the case, talk to your partner your, or your fiance, and like see okay why is she showing like those kind of like why do you think she's showing that kind of same pattern as right. Mecca's wife? Um, or go to couples therapy or counseling. You're about to get married. You're supposed to go to counseling and stuff. Find a good counselor. I know, like, there's church counseling and stuff, but probably find, like, a licensed therapist who's also a counselor and go to that and see, like, a couple's therapy and, like, talk it through and see, like, okay, like, address, like, the things that she does that's sim that you're seeing in Emeka, what Emeka was discussing, those characteristics that you were seeing in her. Discuss that and see if she can change before making a decision, but don't just watch somebody's video or interview. And because, obviously, Emeka didn't say everything, you know? So you don't know, like, the full, full story. He just said, like, a peep. So don't just say, oh, I'm done with her. Come and post it on social media. You're done. No. Give her a chance or whatever the situation may be and see from there. But don't just say, oh, I'm following this because I saw it. No. I think he should, like, either go to, like, couples therapy or something and, like, work it out from there. But don't just say, oh, because you saw somebody else's thing. Yes. Although, like, people get, like, revelations that, right. like, comfort. Maybe he's been praying about it, and that's a mm -hmm. confirmation. Who knows? Right. But I don't think he should just just drop it right drop there. Drop it like that. Okay, pa. Well, for me, concerning the tweets that the guy made, I think the guy was finding an escape route. Like, God bless him. <laughs> he an escape route, and he used it. He wanted to do his thing all, all along. Mm -hmm. He just used this as an excuse. So for, for, for whatever he says, that is it. But there's a key point that I listened to the Makers uh, interview. He's a legend. Right. When I was a child, I was watching this guy. I listened to the full interview just to be sure. What <laughs> when you were a child, when you were a child, what you were? No, when I was a child, I was watching him on TV already. The <laughs> Makers so, is not 16 years, bro. The <laughs> Makers is a big, big, big man. Yeah. I know, he's an old star. I think he started acting very young, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was watching the guy. Right. So he's, a, he's a legend. So I watched the full interview, and there's a key point that I think people are, 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 are missing. He said, never ever get married when you are successful. Mm. Yeah, he said that. Mm. He said, when you are successful, it's hard to know who loves you. Mm. Because guess what? This is a maker. 
Mm. And make up, trust me, if you should mention three actors from Africa, during the early 2000s, there's no yeah. way you don't mention Emeka. Right. Not, not just male. Mm-hmm. Not just male. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the Genevieve, whole, Ramsey. Mention three. The whole of Africa. Yeah. Early, two, early 2000s. That's true. And you mention his name. So if this guy has big as in age, all the women were crazy over it. You see, sometimes you sit down with women, and then Emeka comes on TV, and the women watch it, and they go, oh my God, oh my God. You know it. They see it. <laughs> And you know what guy is a left team, sometimes you do when he's doing the movie, you're like, baby, you do it, baby. <laughs> so for all this love, you could even blog <clears throat> So it tells you that in the human being, nobody nobody has a perfect life. Right. That is life is how God it comes. You just have to be careful. Nobody mm-hmm. knows tomorrow. You might you might be the best couple today and tomorrow you don't know what is gonna happen. But like I said. Marriage is one quite difficult thing. I think marriage is overrated for me. I, I think it is high time that we need to slow down the conversation of marriage. We need not to prioritize it as part of life, but it's an achievement. We made marriage an achievement to the extent that everybody, what it become one of people's prayer topic. We understand when well, now people want to be successful in life. I want to be able to be successful, take off, blah, 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 blah. they have a marriage. Marriage also comes in. I think it, it, it shouldn't be that way because marriage is killing people. Yes, it's making people making good homes and all of that. But look at him. Mm. That guy was lost in the system for how many years? Mm. He didn't even know what was going on. Right. He spoke. You understand? And all because of marriage. So if marriage can let such a legend, such a, a, a talent go in, 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 go out of business for this long, then it tells you that there's a problem. But all the same, nobody knows tomorrow. Whatever that happened to you, that's a shrug. The same thing can happen to this person and if this person will enjoy. Mm. Nobody knows how life is. Mm. Life is how it comes to you. You accept it and you move forward. You cannot get jammed. So whoever did that tweet, coming back to that tweet, he was just looking for an escape, <laughs> escape route. And he just uses, you don't love your your girlfriend, your friends. You want right. to come out. And you're using a big car. Do your thing and go. Nobody will stop you. All right. Do your thing and go. Nobody will stop you. <laughs> Well, mm-hmm. uh, to me, I feel like uh, marriage is a, a very critical decision to make moving forward in life. And uh, to choose a partner, you really have to look into what the person is really about, what are her core values, likewise the woman looking at the man's core values and stuff. And uh, I think society has changed so much that women don't actually attack the same uh prestige to marry as it used to be. You know? mm-hmm. Back in the days our grandparents married and uh, they didn't even know their wives before they married them and stuff like that. But those marriages lasted longer. Mm-hmm. Today social media is really playing a bigger role in influencing women as to how to live their life and other stuff. So uh, with this happening to uh, an, a famous actor like that mm-hmm. is really terrible to to look at and for the guy who was saying he wouldn't go ahead to marry his fiance then you should know he knows uh certain things we don't know about oh. you know some women are in for the money even though it's not a bad thing every woman is a gold digger anyway oh. yeah just some have bigger children uh, slave i be nice <laughs> She is not happy with that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. It's normal for a woman to look at somebody better than her. Okay. I mean, so, I, I every woman is going to go deeper. Just some know how to hide the shovel. Mm. Yeah, it's a See, like there that. is no woman who is earning, let's say, every thousand dollars. Mm. Who is going to marry somebody who is earning 30,000 dollars? 30,000 dollars. It will never happen. No. No. There, there is some woman. No. no. It's 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 all Basically, well, women don't date. Yeah, I know, but some no. some of the women, you know, Somewhere. no, it, it got to be certain circumstances. I don't think you're going to marry to the lady, but you're not going to be happy. Yeah. Trust me, it happens, but I ask how many of There's them. never happiness, and There's for no happiness. to be the head, it's, it's a double edged sword. Mm. Yeah, mm. That's it, that's it's very rare. Way. I mean, yeah, it's, it talk, even the Bible talks about it. You know, the man is the head of the house, so the woman have to be the support. So yes. yeah, she'll be nagging through. One of the most difficult things that would be is that you are married to somebody who doesn't love you. Mm. 
Mm. But I'm put myself in those shoes and I'll be like, how is it gonna be knowing that I'm married to this person but there's no love in yeah. Especially living in a country where divorce is a big deal. It, it, is, it, is. You you it can divorce, even make you a yeah. everything. And I know people who are mm. living together with their spouse and they are not married, but they are married. Yeah. They are legally married, but they are not married. Mm. Someone will tell you, oh, I met one lady like this, I was talking to her, so you claim you are you are not with your husband, but you guys are saying uh, we bought the house together. We're in the house, he does what he wants, which I do what I want. Money. Stay in the same house. Yeah. Wow. This is America, it's going on. Yeah. You mm. understand? People have become co tenants. There's roommates. Co roommates in the same room in the name of marriage. But marriage. Not marriage. Right. You understand? It's happening. And I, I, I told him, and this is a man who made. Yo, he's he when I when when what the full interview you see that you never yeah. cried. Yeah. Right. No, he went through a lot, yeah. Basically. That's true. He's been to hell. Because me yeah. if I if I lost ten dollars, you yeah, I cry. So for you <laughs> He didn't want to talk about his issues because he's a social, uh, he's you know, public figure. Yeah. yeah. People will start talking. Right, right. And I think, right. I think we need to even recommend him for coming out story because you see that kind of thing that we always would have men on for the people mm-hmm. have been harboring, harboring many things. That's, in that's it. And it's killing yeah. them. You understand? People are depressed because of what they are doing. Mm-hmm. You can't even talk to anybody. Who are you going to talk to? Because guess what? I have a problem. So you don't even know that the person who's going to discover your problem is ready to listen to mm. you. Or even listen, because guess what? You come to me, I have my problem. Right. Whilst you're talking, I'll be listening to you when you're done. I say, God will do it. <laughs> <laughs> because I have my So a lot of people are going to. So let's That's recommend true. people come out to speak. Right. If you have good and uh, kind words, let's do it together. I think we have to come basically with, with more than men to be people with no emotions. Yeah. yeah. It's like, if you're going through anything, you have to keep it within. And keep taking that pressure. Right. It bubbles up. So I think for him coming out, a lot of people have similar stories mm-hmm. that they share. Mm-hmm. And this will encourage other people to come out as well to, to say their piece. But who gave yeah. that? Who brought that idea that I said, man, don't talk? No, it's, it's, it's been a thing of the past. It's like men were built to be strong and uh, uh, strong minded and be able to take up. A lot of pressure. That's true. It looks like now um, a lot of people are. Yeah, that's, I that's think it's good that times are changing. More emotional. Come again. I think it's good that times are changing. Right. Especially right. like with men like being able good. to. No, I feel like it, it. Well, hopefully you'll get for good yeah. in the near future. But I think it's good for like men to show their emotions. But like with Africans, when it comes to Africans, is. Because um, recently, what do you call it? One of my aunts passed away. Like at the, you you see people telling like her husband, their kids, oh don't cry, don't cry, because like she has all boys. But it's mm. like the rest of you are crying, but you telling them not to cry. They to just cry. lost their yeah. a wife wow. and a mother. Like Sometimes don't. You have to let it out. Mm-hmm. As, and mm-hmm. and you see it a lot with like even like with you make up for it's kind of grief with a marriage. Like grief comes in different ways. So he's. Like he's still kind of in the process of griefing the marriage in a way, and he lost like a lot of things. Right. So that's a, a form of grief. But the people who probably have probably been told, oh, don't talk about it. But when you talk about it, it helps, especially mm-hmm. when you're grieving. Like people grieve in different ways. But then with Africans, like it's like when it comes to us, it's like we tell people not to grieve, and then like they end up keeping a lot in them. Like it it is damaging, but just let it out. It it helps. Mm. So. Yeah. They have just let it out. Let's still stay in Nigeria. There's, uh, there was another training video about this beautiful lady riding a motorbike. Mm-hmm. I think from Ghana to Togo to Nigeria. We saw what happened to Ghana police. And then you know, she, she had an interaction with the Ghana police. Uh, the policeman said, can I have a contact? I mean, people are saying that he wanted to just exchange contact to in the future. Maybe, I don't know if they want to do business. When it got to, let's say, our sister country, Nigeria, what happened? To <laughs> money? 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 <laughs> Paul, yeah. you have been with these uh, celebrities. You have traveled a lot. And also, you've been over here in America. You know how American police, they behave, and also African police yeah. sometimes. Not all of them. I mean, some of them, how they behave. What is your take on this one? Uh, I think, uh, how would I call it, the security institution everywhere is corrupt mm. you know if we don't see it in america doesn't mean uh we don't see issues of uh, the cops shooting people down 
for us. They don't even have a plan. Right. So we with this issue with Ichi Boots, that's the mm-hmm. name, the YouTube channel. I've seen the video and I think um lots of security uh uh how do I call it? Uh security breaches. Yeah, the systems in Africa mm-hmm. is corrupt basically. Oh. If it didn't happen in Ghana, doesn't mean Ghanaian cops are not corrupt. They yeah. are. Mm-hmm. We all know. We've lived in that space before. We know they are corrupt as well. It's just that these Nigerians were caught up in this <laughs> whole thing, not knowing she was filming everything. Yeah. You know. So I think uh, you know. I think uh, corruption has gone through like it's from the top all the way down mm. and to solve this issue we we'll have to take like the whole of everybody to to resolve it mm. uh, I, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing we can do to we can do to change it that's true again. that's true that's it true it just happened to be a right. uh, a bad day for the nigerian cops and a that's good true. one for the Ghanaian cops that's true. well for me today i saw the video that the people have been they have been sacked from the Nigerian police force. Mm. Yeah, there was a ceremony of taking the <laughs> yeah, in the barrier. So I think when I saw the video, I was like, okay, I like the fact they are doing it in an open space because that at least they try to do it to deter others from doing the same thing. Yeah. So I think the deterrence mm. is there. But the question is, are they going to continue? Because mm. guess what, Africa. It's high time that we need to let up. We need to have strong institutions yeah. who are going to help us build. Help, you know, help. I, I don't think we can we can stop corruption, yeah. but at least minimize corruption. Because trust me, the corruption level, not just police, the corruption level in Africa, let me talk about that. It's crazy. Once you enter Ghana, right from the airport to everything that you get involved in Ghana, there's a little bit of corruption attached to it. Yeah, are you serious about yes, this? Yes. Mention one thing that you're talking about. Okay, I'm not even going to say mention one thing that you're Mention anything and I'll tell you how corrupt it is. Even the church is corrupt. Mention. <laughs> <laughs> Mention aspect of Angana, Angana, and I'll let you know the corruption attached to it. Anything at all. Go be, go be joint. Yeah, I'll tell you, go be joint. You get there, you are very, very good. The bank will tell you, oh, but I won't touch Yes. So, so I, it tells you that. We are in a, we are in a country where we are very much corrupt. Right. It's, a, it's an account part of us. We understand. I remember recently my daughter's passport expired. So I was trying to renew it. Mm-hmm. So I, call, I, I went online, did a whole life thing. The month they gave to go take the picture. Go take the picture. I spoke to somebody. So, oh, you will not wait for them to call you before you go do that. <laughs> Don't be serious. Eh? <laughs> Bring thousand come and we do it the next day. Guess what? I gave them thousand. They did it the next day. So you are also corrupt. So also, uh, I'm uh, coming there. No, you are also corrupt I because you are enforcing it. So let me come there. Okay. So then I did it because I mean I realized that oh, that's not my business. I'm not ready. If I'm really really want my passport, my daughter's passport, then I have to go to it because I guess that's what they've been doing. Everybody is doing. When I want a passport to travel to America, what I want to do my passport only God knows. Mm. Only God knows how I got common passport. You understand, and it tells you that the country need. That was why I tell the gospel to me. If you told me that as we even wait the government to sit in, let me be political. Mm. It's about right I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait like 20 percent. Yeah, because trust me, the only reason why I was I was I was supporting an alpha for me because I've seen his work at the uh, when he was at Tony General because it was called three. He was able to change that Tony General, maybe the buildings, the painting. Everything at first when you go to the uh, the attorney general's office, you see people selling in their yard. Mm. You know, like you make sure everybody was sacked. He brought some sanity. So when he was coming, people were like, okay, this one can fight corruption. And if you come and you can't fight corruption, corruption is our eighty percent problem in Africa. Eighty percent problem. You want school corruption, you want to go to police <laughs> corruption, you want to go to nice <laughs> you want to go to everything. Now you really want to go to public toilet, you have one, you can turn the hey. you understand. So for the police officer, it's unfortunate that they caught because everyone is corrupt. Politicians, everybody is corrupt. But he was so aggressive asking the woman, money, 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 yeah, money. He was so direct. Yeah. yeah. Money, 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 money. How much you bring come? <laughs> yes. And, and you see, last year I was in Ghana. I was driving I was in Ghana around 3, 2 years. I got stopped. I got stopped by police. The police came. They said I should feel good. He said, you need a driving license. So the young driving license. This man was telling me, 
Mm. One year. Oh, it's one year. Yeah, I thought it's ninety days. Uh, is it ninety days? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I can use it for ninety days. I'm mean, the country less than a month. And this policeman wanted to stress me and do this. So the person was talking about that. Yeah. Um, so when I gave the yeah. I left. You understand? So yeah. this is how our country has become. And it's unfortunate that if you don't change it, air corruption is everywhere. But don't let the corruption be affected by ordinary citizens. You who should be corrupt up there, the politicians, you should do your contract and be making huge money. Cool. But the petty, petty things when people want to go to school, go to nursing, go to police, you need passport. Mm. But even now you need electricity meter, meter, meter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so crazy. Yeah, that's true. And now the country is in. Hey, Rabina, what, what about you? No, me, the video was like really funny because he was like, Give me money, give me money. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like, like they were saying, corruption is not going to stop anytime soon. Mm-hmm. But it, it's like people, like I saw like in the comments, like people were like comparing like the Nigerian police officer versus the Ghana police officer. Me, when I first saw the video, before I, wa- I looked at the comments, when I saw the Ghana police officer, when he asked him, like the number, I didn't think much of it. I was like, oh, at least this one he's being nice. Cause the way the Nigerian police officer was, it was, it was a little bit crazy. Like, it, it, cause like she's by herself and like mm-hmm. he, he was very aggressive. But then with the Ghana police officer, he seemed nicer about it. But then a lot of women also found problems. With it. Regardless, people are gonna find problems with something, and the corruption is never gonna stop. So that's my own. I don't know. Cause it was just like. <laughs> For me, basically, I think every African uh, institution. Mm. They can't ride from our bedrooms all the way to from our bedrooms. Yeah, yeah. From <laughs> our from our bedrooms bedrooms all the way to the, the big house. So oh. everybody. That's what, never gonna stop that's what I was asking. That's what I was asking. You mentioned one aspect of our system in that not even the political system. You mentioned even our local, even yeah. check, mention you anything that will come your head. Mention that will let you know. Like all our systems are built of corruption. Mm. You know, nothing can move. Like in this in this country. Basically, if you need a passport and you put the application in, it comes exactly when you're right. supposed to receive. Mm-hmm. We don't have systems built in place to check these things. So mm-hmm. the only way out is for you to give money to somebody to expedite the process. You know, now, it's not like we don't have the system. The systems are there, but the people to implement the system. If the systems are there okay. and people okay. to implement, okay. it has to go on and okay. on. So there are no okay. So now, right now, the, the law that right now is there right now, the, 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 the passport law, is that apply online. You don't need to go to the office. Okay. We'll contact you, give you the date, go to the office, take it. That is what the standard. And the is. time never works. No, that is the standard that we supposed to. So yeah. those from the office who receive the application. Who are supposed to go through to let the process yeah. flow? I rather delay the course. Let me tell you, when I completed, so my, there are no systems. When I completed my national service, yeah. <coughs> when I completed school, I did my national service at BC, at Shorter District, yeah. And at Shorter District, how did you stay in a car? You said how did I stay in a car? Yeah. No, I was, I, I, I lived in a car all my life. No, I mean, how did you get posted? So how did I get posted in a car? In the morning, I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you the corrupt levels, because I was at the school, I did procurement, so I was at the store department. And sometimes people come with a new meter, and the people will tell you, oh, there's no meter. And I go to the office, I see a bunch of meters. Mm-hmm. And I ask myself, why are you people telling them there's no meter? So they have to tell you there's no meter, so that when they ask you for whatever money, you will give. You we'll provide. And it. it becomes a norm, you understand? And the kind of corruption I saw in this at DCG, oh my God, Ghana is not ready to be better for this. Because the corruption level is crazy, I'm really? telling you, it's crazy. Let me tell you, the average numbers of people that work at UCD at certain districts are not more than 30 people. Mm-hmm. And guess what, when you get the UC working staff, more than 100, and all of them are Goro boys. All of them, very UCD club. Goro boys, they are not on UCD payroll, they are not recognized by UCD, but they work with UCD, mm-hmm. you understand? So it tells you, and the UCD have accepted them. As part of them, they go and fill them all of that with them. In fact, you go to passport office, mm-hmm. you go to there, you see Golo boys all over which the passport office people know that these people are in the system and if I started them as part of them, then that's a problem. Mm-hmm. You understand? So I'm telling you, Ghana, if it's going to be better place, maybe after we die and come back. Mm, after we die and come back. Let me combine mm-hmm. this to a uh, 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 training issue about our our beautiful sister, Ifwa Asantua.
also trending with uh Rezuma. Is it what 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 Rezuma? Yeah, Rezuma. I think Rezuma. I don't know why I, I, he came out stating that she cannot uh, use other people's sound if uh, if she want to use it. Man. She need to bring all the kind of lace, and it was going back and forth. You know, the media, everybody was talking about it, and also how our musician Black Cherry, Samini, uh, uh, was it Reggie Rashton, and yeah. also they are talking about playing ninety percent. Is it ninety percent, right? Yeah, yeah. no, it's eighty. Is it eighty? Nah, they were calling for uh, 80 20 right now so play 80 80 percent ghanians on this december to remember let's combine this two let's combine this two yes let's combine this two if we're with resume because it's the same industry space and that's why i want us to combine this two paul let me come to you oh man what, what would i take uh, no um this is exactly what we spoke about like earlier concerning systems. If there were right systems in place, we wouldn't be discussing this issue right now. Mm -hmm. You know? Because we don't have those structures, it's like everything said is just out of nothing. Whatever they discussed on that day, uh talking about the 80, 80 20 uh, uh plays for Ghanaian music. And then foreign music, twenty percent. It, it just wouldn't work. You have to get everybody on board. There are no systems in place to check who is playing what, who is doing what. Are they actually following the guidelines? Because this will have to be done from a higher authority to put in effect as a law or something. You know, to 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 make it effective. And you know, this industry is based. It it, it goes off money in the first mm -hmm. place. Nigerian artists coming to Ghana actually do promo. They give our money to these DJs to play the songs. We don't put in so much resources mm. as they do coming from outside. And moreover, we don't even have hit songs compared to what comes from outside. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's a whole system we have to address. And I think for us to get to this level of playing enough of our music, not to sound so boring. We have to get uh, uh, musicians on forums and stuff to build up our music, you know, engineers to be able to take courses and stuff, grow the industry to the level we can have good quality music coming up. Otherwise, we will always have this issue forever, mm -hmm. forever. And with our Santua Girls issue, mm -hmm. I think uh, with the list of songs they, they sent to they should have explained to him not to put it out. But he's old enough to know not to put it out, you know? It's confidential. Right, right, right. Yeah. Because the lady, you know, because she even stated, she said that the confidential, she's not going to bring, he's going to be surprised to everybody. So, meaning, the, 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 does he know that, uh, that uh, are you saying that Rezoma didn't well, know anything like that? surprise needed to be there mm -hmm. for the whole thing to be successful. Because right. We will all be thinking, what kind of songs is she going to sing? Mm -hmm. Is my favorite artist song going to be part of it, this and that? What are her capabilities of even doing a reggae or a raga song? You know? right. So, we all have to be in suspense to have a good feel about uh, the singer tone she was about to do. Mm -hmm. But to leak out the list is it looks kind of like slow. Mm. Mm. What about you? Well, um, let me try to stick um, um, the singer tone. Shout out to Asakwa and what she wants to achieve and what she wants to do for Ghana music as a whole and the, um, the journey she wants to partake in. And let me tackle the Rexuma thing. First of all, let me explain something. Rexuma, I think, is the president of Gamu, right? And being the president of Gamu, I had a, had a discussion that he said that um, whatever song that a girl is going to do, the girl needs to let Gamro go, first of all. Because guess what? When you do music, right? When you do music, you register the music uh, uh, with a song writer or whatever. They have the process. One of the places that you have to register your song, some, one of the offices is Gamro. So that Gamro can monitor where they play it, the number of times, so they can take royalties and stuff like that. So all what Rexoma is trying to say is that people have registered their music with us. So therefore, let us know the kind of music we want to go do. So that because this is a world space, it is going to be viral, it's going to go everywhere, so that we can know how to monitor. So that we do. so when he said that, people were like, 
Why is Rezomar working? I think Rezomar was talking about technicalities. People want to really understand the technicalities that you were talking about. So I think that goal Rezomar paid. The Rezomar said, I've seen the list already. The performers again want to perform. I've seen the list. And this is the list. That is why I said that. But why is it that Rezomar didn't even yeah, call the team yeah. behind the coach goals? No, 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 no. The team rather gave the list to me. Because Rezomar is part of the team. They, just, no, they, they demanded for yeah. the list. Yeah. Which songs? Which songs, yeah. Yes. So Resoma was pretty new. Resoma knew all this. Resoma has been part of the journey. The girl journey to the singer from everything. So literally, it's not really about hate, but I guess the way it came out sounded like hate. To me, the list. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. It sounded like hate. But guess what? I think all this, now we are discussing it, right? Maybe it might even be. Jenny will happen it to get more attention. No, but it takes all the suspense. Like, basically, it would be better if we didn't know which kind of songs mm-hmm. she, she wants to sing and all that. Well, yeah, it, will, it will keep us in suspense well, a little bit. Because, well, for me, I will take a while for her to get down to 1,400 and something. Very, very true. Yeah. The suspense, all of that. But however, mm-hmm. it takes it. But guess what? We are still discussing it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, we are not the only people discussing it right now. Other TV stations, other channels, mm-hmm. all of them are discussing it. Guess what? It's giving more numbers to the whatever thing that they want to do. So for me, whether bad news, good news, for me, I love the publicity around it. I agree. So I don't have any problem with that. So for her, I know she can be, I'm still thinking of her. But people are talking that guy about this the energy held that. When she was doing the cooker tone, you know, yeah. they, they, nobody was bringing this negative vibe, you know, about mm-hmm. this. About the, uh, about about the cooker tone. Nobody made any. Yeah, yeah, everybody was supporting her. Everybody was praising yeah. her. Everybody was just pushing her. Like, you know, yeah. There so might be issues this is this is like this is this girl is having like some few days yeah. to start this. But what 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 has happened? Nothing has happened. <laughs> Whatever thing that Thomas said hasn't changed anything. So the thing is will go the thing will go on. It hasn't changed it. We I think we are just giving attention to what is not needed to be given. It's still going on. Even if the the, the music place has come out, the music place Guinness record doesn't care what the song you do. They to them do the song yeah. whatever mm-hmm. hours you want to do. So if the girl have a problem, the girl should just like change the song. Or if they change the song, the one is number one, put it number three, it's number three. It's not a big deal. Let's see greatness happen in Ghana with the girl. I hope she can say for me, tell the two hours singing with your voice. I'm yes. wondering how she will do it. Mm. I'm wondering. You understand? I, I want to see how it's going to be. I saw the setup that they did for her beautiful setup at, at Airport Runabout area. I see people will be there. I see all the media also supporting them. And it's crazy. So, yeah, I give it up to them. And the second topic, um, which was um, about uh, 80% uh, play. Yes. Mm-hmm. That is one topic that I really want us to discuss. I think we are wasting our time. <laughs> big, 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 big. We are wasting our time. We are, you see, and the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm saying we are wasting our time is that I think we are beating around the bush. And we need to come back to the drawing board. You understand? Everybody's calling for it. George Britton. Last year, yeah. George Britton was, last year, George Britton was calling for it. Last year, Shata, Shata, Wale, no, Shata, Shata has been, been calling for this for years. For, you understand? For years. Even to the extent that he even had a problem with Nigeria, to the extent that Bernard Boy has to step in and had a beef with him. Now, guess what, what Samine did at the same time? When he even, sh- I remember when Shantawali was saying that you, Ghana boys, come support me, let's do this. Everybody left this guy to be, mm. to be disrespected by Nigerians, to be insulted by Nigerians. And people say that Nigerians <laughs> are rich, they come and give money. What are all money and they give to the DJs? They are, they are, their life has changed. Now, I'm not yeah. saying they are not giving up. All I'm saying that they will be giving, but guess what? If let's say Joe Baba is a DJ in Hit FM, right? And Wubete is a DJ that plays Santa Monica song. Let's say Joe Baba has been playing my song at Hit FM. He becomes my personal DJ who has been playing my songs. Mm-hmm. Guess what? If I'm coming to America for a show, if the Nigerians are coming to talk, they bring the Nigerian DJ, right? Mm-hmm. So guess what? If you play my song, if I'm coming, why won't I bring you? That's a gig for you. You understand? We need to think about nationalistic agenda. We need to know that we are doing this for Ghana. We are not doing this for a musician. You understand? And sometimes the DJs talk like, oh, this or that, what is good song? <laughs> I want to ask you what I thought right, is good song. Yeah, you understand? That is the pick, apart from the pick, See, everybody thinks I'm doing you a favor. Right. If I play your song, I'm doing mm-hmm. a favor. Mm-hmm. If I play your song, I'm doing a favor. Nobody's doing anybody a favor. We need to think that kind of 
let's take the country to another level. Let's take the education yeah. to another level. Because guess what? And I've so, I've seen people with Lampazo Shatawali that Shatawali is saying that it is not because the guy said when I said that you people yeah, didn't listen to me. Now when you people are saying you want me to come and support, I'm not supporting it. I'm supporting it hundred percent because it's high time that we need to. Because you're SM fan, that's why. Not because I'm an SM fan. <laughs> yeah, because you're SM fan. You understand? SM if 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 you are talking about this for years and you are not supporting it right now, they are talking about yeah, why don't you support it? So so like, like they say, I speak from time. So so you see. I said something. Mm-hmm. I had a, I had a big fight. Satawale is the only artist who had a big issue with the Nigerian industry. We all saw it. Mm-hmm. We all saw it. Na, na, at that time, Satawale is playing. And now his music. It's now his music is now being tra- he's now trending in Nigeria more. He, he's he, because of uh, uh, Bankumi. Mm-hmm. His song is being played everywhere in Nigeria. Or we getting uh, uh, he has more uh, in He's Nigeria getting collaboration from Nigeria and all of that. And now you are telling me, I come and do it that way. But he said, no, now I'm entering there. I don't need, <laughs> and, and, and what helps me is that Black Cherry, who's as young as he is, yeah. Black Cherry streaming, that's what Black Cherry, no, he blew from Ghana, but got the international recommendation from Nigeria. Mm-hmm. When Benaboy did Benaboy came remix, to do the remix, so yeah. And they were like, wow. Because guess what? Shatawali went to Nigeria, he couldn't pull out crowd. Stone Boy went to Nigeria, he couldn't pull out crowd. Black Cherry went to Nigeria and pulled out crowd. Mm. So Black Cherry is well appreciated in Nigeria, even more than San Kondo and at Shatawali that we have. Right. So if you come out and you do all this, it makes you feel like, oh, okay. But Black Cherry did not say it in a bad way. Mm. It's also a good thing to come. No, you just, you just it's, I, think, I, I think it's not a bad agenda. It's basically, let's play more of Ghanaian music mm-hmm. and less of the foreign music. There's no agenda to stop in Nigerian music from being played in Ghana or whatever. We still consume their works anyway. They have really good songs out there, and all we have to do right now is step up. But the thing, we, the thing, the thing that before I come, the thing is, I told the last two weeks I said it. I said Nigerians, if you check the Nigerian independent industry, they have a constitution that is supporting the, their industry. Mm. The constitution says that play eighty percent of our local yeah. content. When they passed that law, the government gave them over hundred million dollars, dollars. to rebound their entertainment industry, and they made a conscious effort not to even allow entertainment movies in the country. They've made these steps, and it's working for them. What stops you from doing the same thing? We don't say no music, even in America. Yet, UK musicians cannot penetrate easily like that. Mm-hmm. It's difficult for them. See, because Gates is one of the greatest musicians in the UK. Mm-hmm. Stones you one of the greatest movies in the UK. All of them ask them how many times did they penetrate in America. Because every country is being patriotic, because every country is protecting mm-hmm. their own. Right. Nigerians protect their own. It's not wrong. All we are saying mm-hmm. is that play 80, 20, 90, 10, whatever, then let your own be majority. Whatever percentage, let your own be majority. How hard is this one? Thank you. <laughs> Slow down, Rina. Let me hear you talk about this. Um, I agree with them, but uh, I would say when it comes to the eighty twenty thing, realistically, it it won't really happen because most of these DJs, like you see on, like I remember last December, like when most of like the people like mutuals on social media that I know, when they went, they're like, oh, why are the DJs like you saw them like after like they've left the after hours like they've left Ace and stuff. Why the DJ is not playing Ghanaian music? I want to hear Ghanaian music. All the DJ play was uh, one Daddy Lumba song. That's it. These, if like the people who go to these places want Ghanaian music, but do these DJs care? They, they. I've seen some girls that I know go up to DJs. Oh, can you play Ghanaian music? They'll ignore them. They'll go. They'll keep playing on my piano, um, Nigerian music and stuff. Ghanaian, what these most of these Ghanaian DJs, they're not patriotic, and most Ghanaians too are selectively patriotic. Like they, they, yeah. they wanna, they wanna rep Ghana when it's convenient, but they don't rep Ghana every day. So that eighty twenty thing, if everyone, I saw it, but I, I literally saw it. Like most people weren't like really interacting with it. I barely seen people talk about it. Like literally, I know some people who just landed yesterday. Why are they when you see their snaps, they're not sing, they're not um recording themselves to no Ghana song. They're recording themselves to Ashaka and stuff. They don't care. Like they don't care about these things. They're not going up to these people like, oh, you guys know the 80 20 thing. They don't care about that. Mm-hmm. They just want to hear the Ashaka. They just want to hear Dali, Nana. That's what they want to hear. Yeah. They don't care 
about because they think, oh, our songs is old or whatever. They listen to our songs when it's convenient, but will they want to listen to it at an event in Ghana? No. So we have good songs. It's just if they want to listen to it. Cause there's um artists like um Last Mid who like came out like this year and stuff. He has great songs, you know. And um I, there's another Ghanaian artist that we came out. Have, we don't, we don't have, have enough, enough that songs. like now yeah, the people who yeah, make good songs. Have, oh, don't have enough no, I feel like the people who make good songs have stopped making songs. Now they're old, nah, so oh, it's like oh, they're oh, not. Oh, not oh, good oh, songs. Oh, oh, Even oh, from production I don't, to I don't, whatever. No. We don't have enough good. No, I, I I bet we don't have enough good songs. I bet bro, you. mention ten Ghanaian songs right now that can compete against Ashake. Yeah. But and even song, uh, Loli at the top or uh-huh. uh, what? Which Ghanaian song? No. Like, How many? We have beautiful Seven. songs. Like, no, but uh, I feel like Ghanaian. another another we, another we issue. We have good music. songs, but another that's, issue is that's collectively though. If mm-hmm. we are talking about foreign music. We are not only talking about Nigeria. We are talking about yeah, Nigeria, South Africa. South Africa. We are talking about uh, American music mm-hmm. as well. So see, see, I, but, think, uh, I think one of our biggest problems is Ghana meets Nigeria. Mm. No, there, here's another problem. Real, really quick. Why? Why is it a problem? Yes. Okay. I see. Problem. We did. A, Ghana meets Nigeria belongs to our, our, our charter house. Okay. And uh, 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 when they came together to do the Ghana. It became one of the biggest events in Ghana. Now, guess what it, it did to the Ghana entertainment industry? Anytime there's a new song that trends in Nigeria, we bring the people in mm. to, understand, to come and perform. So we are, we were always bringing in fresh artists from Nigeria. Meanwhile, there was no event called Nigeria Meet Ghana, mm. where we too can go there to mm. export our talent. You understand? Mm. So we bring them here. Now, apart from the Ghana Meet Nigeria, that we we're bringing them here to come and perform and showcase their talent. We were also Ghana, uh, Ghana Music Award. It's owned by a Nigerian. Now, for the past, for, for some years, Ghana, Ghana Music Awards, all the artists that were performed, the international, they give the international yeah, awards. They, they get paid more to the extent that it's always Nigerians who are being there. Now, mm-hmm. tell you how many Nigerian events do we get the opportunity to go and perform over there? All I'm trying to say is that let's block our system. If Kenny's music could make a statement that they made a conscious effort, to block certain entertainment from the international world so that they can make the entertainers feel good and big. Why can't we do ours? What is stopping us? We mm-hmm. definitely can do ours, but here's another problem. Artists like King Promise really and no, for instance, let me go back. Jackie, when she first came out with Forever, right? The song was great. It was trending in Nigeria. Everybody was using it for their wedding. People were using it in their wedding vows. All of a sudden on social media, the Nigerians are like, oh, this song would it's a, she has a nice song, but it will be a better song. If, for instance, she collaborates, they forced this girl, kept pre- putting pressure on her. She went and did the collab with who? Um, Omar Lay or some, somebody. She did the collab, whatever. Then that part went viral. King Promise, this year, he came out with Terminator. Terminator was viral. It went viral. It reached to Nigeria. But what did they say once again? Oh, the song is good, but it'll be better if you add a Nigerian. Then it'll be better. No, now he's no, made two remixes. He's made two. He has one remix with um this one guy. And then now he has another remix, the second remix with Sean Paul and Tiwa Savage. His original song, his original song was great, but a lot of even Ghanaians are supporting them when they say, oh, unless you had a Nigerian or someone else, the song isn't good. But you found our song as the Ghanaian, a soul Ghanaian, and you don't think it's good enough. You like the song, it was good enough for you at that point. But until a Nigerian is on, you don't think it's good enough. That's another big issue where. It's like a constant pressure of Ghanaian artists feeling the need to, that they, they won't be successful if they don't add a Nigerian artist. Your song, King Promise's song was successful. Everyone, people in Indonesia are playing the original version. But what happened? He was pressured to add Nigerian people to it. It's great. I, I don't knock the remix down, but we need to show appreciation to our original song. Not adding constantly, oh, we need a, a collab by a Nigerian. It's too, it's too much on social media. But, like just cut it out. Uh, it's definitely Nigerians, yeah, but then so it's like. We definitely need them. But I feel like they should be able to. Appre- like we are no, because we appreciate. It's not like we're not gonna get a, if Ghanaian artists. If it was the other way around and Ghanaian artists were at the top, we're not gonna go to them and be like, "Oh, your song is nice, but you need a Ghanaian before it'll be better. Before I want to listen to it for real, so or I, before I want to I download it, it makes no sense." All of us is good music. Right. Good music. 
will always break every barrier. It will always go far. Mm-hmm. We just need to work on our music. Simple. Talking about good music, let's talk about Spyro also in the news about he going to the church to perform Spyro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he made is that who? People are talking who's about your who's your guy. You know, he went to the and, church to um, do the Carol's Night thing, the performance. Pa, let me come to you. Yeah, I saw the video and uh, for me, the church. Yeah, yeah, for me, I think when I saw the video, I wanted to have time to dig into what they did that. Because I think when you look at the video very well, you might see it's a it's a clip. But he made it clear that he's part of the church choir. Yeah. So even when he went, even if you he's mm-hmm. been part of the church choir ever since. Ever since before even yeah. yeah. He before spider, he yeah. You understand? He it's still goes to church. Yeah. It's if the church don't even have a problem. It's be outside the church you have a problem. That's the, People I mean, are saying that, yeah. Solomon. Who wrote good love songs more than Solomon? David. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon was even describing how a woman looks in the Bible. And he was praising God, how God created a woman. What is wrong with you? You see, sometimes we worry ourselves. Marriage, marriage is part of our life. Relationship is part of our life. What scripture? Of life. What scripture? You understand? Can you quote the scripture the for love, people? Are you talking about love? The, the, the Solomon and the, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. scripture. What scripture? It's in the book. I know it by what scripture. When you get the book, <laughs> <laughs> when you get the book, you will see it. So it tells you that there are certain things that we human beings we bother ourselves so much. Yeah. The person did a song at the church. There's nothing wrong. It's what about the fact of what, what's, what's our problem? What is our problem? The church members are not even complaining. Read that You don't see it in the church. Mm-hmm. You do nothing over there. Mm. The pastor is not even complaining. Then we rather we have a carry in our head and say, this family went to church, it's fine. How is that business? Anyway, you want to do everything to even put people to the Christ. You have to do it. Yeah. Even when Christ came, those who are these CRS in school. So sometimes I don't know the quotation. I don't know the same thing. And I can tell you that even this Christ mm-hmm. went to, if you went to the ghetto, to be able to pull them out of the ghetto. You cannot be, be so much righteous if you want to change somebody. Go into the darkness mm. and put them and take them to change. Well, that's fine. That's what we said. So I don't know what to do. Being a boy, what's your take? Um, to me, I feel okay. I don't. I see where they're coming from, but I feel like he could have used this other song. Not only Which other song. Well, he used only fine girl. You are coming to sing only fine girl, but you could have used uh, who's your guy? That one I could kind of see. It could kind of blend in with church somehow, but only fine girl. Who, which is the fine girl you are singing to in church? It's not. Oh, but there are so many fine girls. It was a I, drama. I mean, yeah, but... was, listen, basically, yes, yes. it was a drama that they were doing, yeah. okay, and so. the drama is it was having a king, and the king uh, invited a secular that's person. So that's why he played that. Part. Yeah. Also, so oh, okay, so. But see this. This is our social media. Is <laughs> because it's like, you'll see like one perspective and because somebody will come and post it. They won't post the whole thing. So it's confusion. But I know he did like an event recently. He was like, he sang his circular songs and then he also sang gospel too to like the people. So do him. Whatever works, whatever floats his boat, he should do. He's become successful. If the church supports him, they support him. It's not my own. So that is the take about, you know, Spyro and I mean... I also second with them. He's he's part of the you know the church choir and everything, so he can do whatever it is. I mean, he said that he's serving God, and he can also sing whatever he wants to sing at his church. That is his opinion. Let's go for a commercial, but when we come back, we need to have some you know uh, some some finger food from KK will be cuisine. Let's go for a commercial break. We'll be right back.
Thank you very much for staying to this time. Big Six Barbershop is a proud sponsor. Thank you very much. Big Six, if you want a place to shave your hair, to do your hair braids, come to Big Six Barbershop. And remember to call them to book an appointment. It's very, very important. And also, Big Six is having a hall that you can rent for all your occasion, events, and everything. Uh, contact Big Six and you ask Big Six that you need Afro, Afro beat all. To also book for your appointment and everything. Also, Slay by Bina. Thank you very much for helping us do our makeups and everything. Slay by Bina. Contact Slay by Bina, and she's going to help. Remember to tell her you have a promo code the Deep Inside on Joba, and also KK Ruby Cuisine. Yes, you can see I'm having some. It's a spin roll. <laughs> KK Ruby Cousin, thank you very much for also gracing us the food every Friday over here. We, we thank you very much for all this. If you want KK Ruby Cousin to also cook your food, that is a number below the screen. Contact them and she's going to help you. Remember to add the, uh, you know, the promo code, the tip inside of Choba. Also, Oboba Village and Apartments, we thank you very much for sponsoring. That is my man's place at Oboba Village at Pukwasa Mindful. If you want a place to stay, go to you know Oboba Village and Apartments. Let's go to our trending issue. Just two there is uh Celine Dion is trending on the internet space, uh, battling with this kind of you know sickness, and also there's this young guy, 16-year-old guy who shot 12 years old. And he has been jailed for 20 years. Let's go to Slay by Bina. Slay by Bina about all this trending uh, news. What do you think about it? Um, For Celine Dion, my heart goes out to her. Like, any type of, like, disease that, like, is uncontrollable is very, like, heartbreaking. And especially, like, she's a legend. Like, most of us grew up on her. Like, we love her songs and everything. Um, When it comes to, like, the young kids, it, it's really sad that, like, these kids are, like, like, these are kids, like, younger than me that are involved in, like, violence and stuff. Like, I feel like it shouldn't get to a level where you feel the need to just... Uh, why should you feel the need to... Mm-hmm. Why should you feel the need to, like, go and get, like, one of your parents' gun or something mm-hmm. and take it and take it to go and shoot another child? Like, what is the point of it? Like, mm-hmm. no. You, you shouldn't result to violence. And, like, I feel like a lot of... A lot of the youth now lack a sense of communication. Everything is all oh, violence. If if they don't resort to violence, they feel like they're not good enough or whatever. And like honestly, a lot of the youth need help. So hopefully they do get help in the future. And like most of them do change their ways. But it's really sad that you're wasting your life in jail. Like by the time you come out here in your thirties, you could have done so many things with those twenty years that you're going behind bars. Like you could have gone to college. You could have had your if you didn't want to go to college, open, go to trade school or something, open a business. Like you could have done so much, but now you're wasting, you wasting your life. So you, you get your constant, you, that's the consequences of your actions. So mm. there's not much to say. All right. Do you have any last words for your people? Um, book Slay by Pina. Check me out. Um, also check out KK Ruby Cuisine. Um, I am also the co-CEO of KK Ruby Cuisine, so check us out, support the business, and yeah. Bye, buddy. Food so sweet, make me wanna slap my mama. I saw this on the Friday, the other Friday, the movie. Mm-hmm. When they said this, when they eat their chicken, they said, the chicken so good, make me wanna slap my mama. Really? Yeah, go and watch that movie. Oh wow. You were a baby when that movie came out. <laughs> oh. F- so oh. on the most serious note, let me um, uh, sickness is inevitable. Nobody can escape sickness. It's a million is. I think she is in her seventies. Yeah. Hey, no, she's in her fifties. She's in her fifties. Yeah, she's she- in like fifty something. The that woman has been around for so many years. She started singing. She, she started singing young, but she's died in her 70s. Cher well, is in her 70s. Well, everybody can get sick regardless of your age. And when the more you get old, the more you see certain signs of sicknesses. So, yeah, I hope she recovers. So, it's sickness. There's nothing you can do. She's rich. Probably she can take care of herself. Now, talking about the guy who killed, I think when I read the story, it's gun related. But the question I've always wanted to ask myself is 
what was the purpose of manufacturing gun? What but, the... but apart from you talking about the gun, mm -hmm. they were in a new space that was talking about he was also doing drugs. Yeah, that's, hard drugs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's gun related. So it's guns with drugs. But I'm trying to understand the concept behind the manufacturing of gun. What the person who created gun? What, what was the purpose? To kill animals? To kill the fellow <laughs> human being? Because that are still down. Well, we need to ban guns. There's too much guns in America. Too much guns. Too much guns. Now, if you check the statistics, you see that the number of deaths that is caused by guns at all. On a daily basis, somebody that has gun related issues. And it's, it's so much. It's scary anyone who are working on the street of New York. Because you might not even know who can just approach you, get angry on the slightest day, and just shoot you. People just kill for no reason. And I ask myself, why can't we ban gun use? Why? What, 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 what is a gun? What is a gun? Without gun, can't we function? Without gun, can't we? Because it's not like those. The Western people who created gun, they are not hunters. They don't hunt. They don't kill animals. They, they, probably, they, probably, did they probably did back in the days, but now they are not doing it. So what is the use of gun if not to kill ourselves? The use of gun right now, the, well, the reason why they create gun right now is to kill ourselves. Apart from killing ourselves, what is the use of gun? Let, let me see here. If right now somebody should meet you as an intelligent person and ask you, what is the use of gun? What? Tell me. Is to kill your fellow human being. To kill animals. Just what animals? Hmm? Deer. Protection. Protection. From what? From other human beings. From other human beings. So imagine that other human being also has gun. That's why you are protecting yourself. Because he has gun. So the moment this one don't have gun, you don't need to protect yourself from this one. So what, 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 what are you trying to say? And all I'm trying to say, we should ban gun. We should ban gun. <laughs> the level of how people are dying of gun use is crazy. And it, what, 16 years? Mm -hmm. Is it 16 years? Be jailed 20 who years. Killed, who killed 14 year old boy? Mm -hmm. 12 years. 12... Really? Mm -hmm. He really? killed 12 years old boy. 12? Mm -hmm. So it should tell you the level of people who are dying out of. And guess what? There's a mother who has been jailed because his son, six year old son, took it down to school and shot another person. Uh, shot a teacher, the teacher. Shot a teacher. And the mother is going to jail. Too many guns in America. There's too many guns. And I don't know the reason why there are too many guns because they are not hunters. Mm. They are just killing ourselves. If it's for protection, can't we just stop? But we are only protecting now. We are only using guns to protect ourselves from people who use guns. Nobody will protect themselves from somebody who's using stick. Mm. Why can't we ban guns? Why? Why, right. ban guns? why can't you ban guns? Okay. Mm. Let me come to you, Paul. Yeah, we selling the answer here. I think it's just a rare condition, you know. In life, we all go through certain stuff we can that are beyond our control. So it's one of life experiences she's going through right now. All we have to do is pray for her. That's it. Uh, with a gun situation, <laughs> 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 this just tell you basically that the American communist uh, system is broken. Mm. You know, for kids to be able to have access to guns at that tender age is so rare. You know, in mm -hmm. Ghana, where we come from, this kids will probably be playing soccer or something around this time. Mm -hmm. And to have kids holding guns and killing each other is just a yeah. 12 years should be doing mama and yeah. dad. I come and mama, I come and my dad. <laughs> I come and your mom, your father, I come and your mama, dad. I come and your mama, I come and put me. I come and yes, I come and we are going to see you. That's what children of that age should be doing. Not rather using guns to kill themselves. They, no, see, I'm a father, right? Okay. And I'm scared to raise my kids in America. Right. Because sometimes it's scary. Mm -hmm. I lost, I lost yeah. my brother just last two months ago. And when I received the call that my brother is dead, the first thing that came in my mind is probably somebody shot me. Because mm. that's the first thing that comes to your mind when the person dies in America. Because the use of guns is crazy. You sleep in your room and you hear gunshots everywhere. It's, it's crazy. Where I wake, I wake in Manhattan. The last time I was there, I just hear gunshots. But I came out and the police cars everywhere. Gunshots. Like, for quite a long, what is the use of producing guns? I just want to ask this question. I don't want to ask my father in 10 minutes. What are you producing a gun? What do we do with a gun? Okay, because everything that is being produced has a reason. Tripod for shooting video. Uh, life for shooting this one. Shoe for wearing. Gun for what? Tell me, gun for what? For killing. For, 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 for protection from wolves. Uh -huh. Everything. The only 
protecting yourself from other wicked people. Right. The other wicked people, wicked people have gun. That's what we are protecting. Imagine for if all of us don't have gun, what are we protecting ourselves from? Hmm. They're probably be holding spears. They will spears, yes. spears. By the time you take spears, your heart will come down. See, God <laughs> is just two minutes old. Grand, see, Not even two minutes, like one second. One second, that's when I was driving. Mm-hmm. I was driving, I was parking my car. I just see the guy by the bomb. I just came out. The guy demanded hundred dollars right there. Yeah. Just because yeah, I Spanish guy. Yo, like, there is no scratch, nothing. nothing and that's I was telling the guy, yo, the guy said, yo, nigga, don't fuck me up. I'm gonna pull the gun on you and just kill you right here. <laughs> the guy wasn't joking. Right. For hundred dollars, you want to kill me? Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Just for nothing. Just for nothing. Yeah, do you have any last words? I say you give up. I give up, yes. <laughs> I give up, yes. I give up my life. I give up. Uh, let's go with your last words. Yeah, word. my last words. Shout out to everybody. And once again, we are still on, on our uh, uh, monthly birthday thing. Um, this next month birthday ending, it's, it's coming on. Um, it's like we said, strictly by invitation. We have the list. We are compiling the list. If you have your month, you can just pick the numbers that you see on the screen or find Joe Baba on all social media platforms. Contact Joe Baba. Tell Joe Baba, Joe Baba, I'm doing my birthday. And let's see how we put you out of the numbers. And we have a great party with this month birthday. It's the Deep Inside Birthday Party. And it's coming on this month birthday. The Deep Inside alongside Yacht TV. Yeah. So it's Joe Baba in collaboration with Yacht TV present Deep Inside Birthday Party. Mm-hmm. And also proud sponsored by Afro. Afro, it's it's going to be it's going to happen at Afro Afro Beach Luxury Hall, right? Afro mm-hmm. Beach Luxury Hall. When the time is due, it's physical invitation, so we cannot right. even give the address mm-hmm. that I'm participating because the people who are celebrating the birthday they have to be the one that will invite other people. Other people, mm-hmm. so I'm going to invite other people for them. It's them. We we have our people that we are going to invite. Mm-hmm. So when you get, we are going to just let us know when it's your birthday, and we might do something nice for you and promote the deep inside. The greatest podcast which has come for the African community in the diaspora Shout. for America. If you want to listen to good news, if you want to listen to anything, you need to log on to Joe Baba and check out the deep inside. Join us. Let's build this brand. Let's promote ourselves. Let's build business. The birthday party is not just to have fun. We are there to network, do business. Mm-hmm. So if you do any business, come out there. So you're a fashion designer, Lockheed will be there to showcase the, the design that he does all of that. Everything that you do, come. We are ready to network. If you're a lawyer, come on board. Let's network. Let's meet people. If you're a medical doctor, come on board. We are trying to grow a community from a different perspective. This is Africa's time. And deep inside, we are taking it to another level. Thank you. Taking it to another level. Paul, do you have any last words here? Oh, my last words should be, uh, I think for Ghanaians in the diaspora, like, uh, we, should net- we should learn to uh, at least network and uh, mm-hmm. let's put the envy and jealousy aside. Yes. Be able to work as a team. I think growing from back home, it's like a lot of things have gone against us. Our educational system has taught us to be greedy enough and wanting just everything for ourselves. So we have to learn that uh, the world has changed now. Next word is everything. Let's work together and grow each other. All right. Thank you. Grow each other. That is the deep inside. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Please do well and subscribe to the channel. <laughs> KK Ruby Cuisine. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much. This is very delicious. KK Ruby Cuisine. That is the numbers below the screen. Contact them if you want her to cook for your lesson. If you want her to cook for you, not know, only just occasions. If you want some, you know. Food yeah, pan, small banco and jollof. Yeah. You want kick your cuisine challenge? I'll be single man, or I'll be single boy. You, you know, eat about. Even if you're a girl, sometimes <laughs> you feel like you need to cook for your man. Even if yes, yes. if you are married, yes. if you are married and you still want to cook Anything. for you know. Mm-hmm. You know, last week when I came, mm-hmm. I ate whatever we ate. I've not eaten again. I don't want any food to spoil my mouth. Yes, because I don't want because the food was too good. I've not eaten again since last week. What's what are you saying? Say it again. Last week when I came, the mm-hmm. food was too good. I didn't want any food to spoil my mouth. So I'm not eating again from today. So that tells you how good mm-hmm. the food is. Now I, know you, now I know the reason why you can't even remember the quotations. <laughs> <laughs> so like I was saying, KK <laughs> no, Ruby Cuisine, thank you very much for sponsoring the show. Thank you very much. And also Slay by Bina, thank you very much for also sponsoring the show. And to our biggest sponsor, Big Six Barbershop. Big Six. Listen, 
I keep on telling you, you need to contact Big Sis. It's by appointment. Call Big Sis. The Big Sis. Hey, I was watching deep inside. I remember the birthday, especially coming next year, January, is going to be our first birthday. And KK Week Cousin is going to cook for us. Slay by Bina is going to do all the makeup for everybody over there. And also, and the location is going to be an Afrobeat luxury hall, right? Yes. yes. Afrobeat luxury hall. That's what we're going to have. Birthday. If you are celebrating your birthday, especially in January or February or March, make sure you take the numbers below the screen. Call us, text us, let us know that, okay, Joba, I want to be part of this. So that we can just book you and you will also get opportunity to also invite your family or your friends and guess what we have a lot of surprises attached to it and also there's a tax season on my tax and accounting services that is the number below the screen you can also contact on my Omar is my g my has been doing my tax things from the day i came to america i've been doing all my business and everything contact on my tax and accounting a boba village and apartment in uh Pukwasi Amount from that is my mom's place. Go there, relax. You know, this December to remember how people are flying to Ghana. Just go to a Boba Village and apartment to go and relax over there. And also Joba Deliveries, if you want people to deliver all your stuff for you in Ghana, contact Joba Delivery. Joba Delivery is going to also help you. Coastline, if you want an airline ticket to buy to go wherever you want, to what you want to renew your passport, you want to get a visa. Contact Coastland. Coastland is also going to help you. Like I said, Big Sick is our proud sponsor. Thank you very much, Big Sick. Tayu, yes, that is a man. Yes, he owns Big Sick's barber shop, but also with his beautiful wife. You know, they are doing a great job in this community. You know, shout out to you guys. One day, one day, we're going to bring them on the show. We're going to talk to them. We're going to dissect into their, you know, their life. We're going to dip in how they came by with big sales, how they started everything, because it's not easy to establish business in America. My name still remains the same. My name is Kathleen. You can call me G to the friend, Tim Joba. Keep the focus. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms. We will meet again deep inside. Bye-bye. <laughs>